Okay, well, let's talk about rebuking with love. First, I've noticed that people always want to rebuke people, but they forget the whole with love part. Um, so let's look at a few things. Matthew 7, 1 through 6. You know, wisdom isn't just having the right words. Wisdom is knowing how to say the right words. It's knowing when to say the right words. Oftentimes, we try to give our kids words of wisdom, and it blows up on our face. Why? Because wisdom is not simply knowing something real deep or knowing something from experience. Wisdom goes past experience. Okay? Wisdom says, this person is not ready to receive this at this time, so I'm not going to say it. Discretion. See that? The wisdom always has that discretion of when to say something, but it also has a discretion of who to say it to. Um, this person could really profit from this, but this person is not in my authority. They don't even like me. I shouldn't say this because this will just push them farther away from me and also will push them farther away from the truth. So Matthew 7, 1 through 6, notice what he says here. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. First, first judge yourself, then you'll be able to rightly help your brother. Now look at what he says next. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. You may have a word of wisdom, but don't give those don't give that wisdom to someone who's not ready to receive it. See what I mean? You need to ask yourself the person, and you know, like it or not, sometimes your children will be fools. Sometimes they will not be willing to listen to discipline. Sometimes they will not they will not trust in God. Fact. However, you need to make sure that you are not saying the constantly saying little nuggets of wisdom because a whole bunch of little nuggets of wisdom. What did I just say about proverbs? May, with many words there comes foolishness. Okay, so with all these nuggets of wisdom, you're going to say something dumb. You're going to say something at the wrong time. You're going to say something to the wrong person. That's what happens when you always have pennies, little pennies of nuggets to give out. Eventually you run out of pennies. So make sure you always say things with the right attitude, at the right time, to the right person. Just have wisdom in your wisdom. Let's just say that. Um, 1 Corinthians 5. And make sure you remember that, you know, if someone's older than you, that you definitely shouldn't be shooting off your mouth. I am continually surprised at this one. You'll have this person who goes and tells this person what for, and they're like 20 years older than them. It's like, what are you doing? Trying to cause a conflict? Or, and we'll talk about this later. Um, actually, I'll talk about that later. Um, in 1 Corinthians um, 5, 12 through 13, what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside, expel the wicked person from among you. And what he's saying is, God judges the, the sins of the world, okay, because they don't have the grace of Christ, because they've rejected him, okay? But those in the church, we are definitely called to correct them when they do, when they're living in sin. Um, expel the wicked person from among you. Um... And, let's see, um, earlier when he was talking about judging, uh, when Jesus was talking about judging, he was talking about more of personal relations with people and doing it with the right attitude and not doing it as a, as a, setting yourself as a judge over another person. Um, and then in Romans uh, 2, he talks about judging as well. Paul talks about judging as well. But once again, you have to a ask yourself the the... the the context of that. Um, okay, then First uh, Corinthians thirteen four through eight a. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love delight does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. 
It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. I'm going to stop right there and run through this checklist with people, okay? When you are when you are restoring someone, rebuking someone, are you being patient with them? When you are in conflict with your wife, are you being patient with her? Okay. Are you being kind in a situation? Are you being kind or are you trying to irritate? Are you trying to cause division? Are you trying to lord it over them? It does not envy. Are you are you envying that person? It does not boast. Are you being prideful? Well, in my experience, do 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 do. I'm the all-knowing person because I'm 60 years old. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can't you can't start acting foolish just because you're old. Okay. Um, oftentimes, I'm surprised by um, people trying to teach people by pride. Well, in my experience, this. Oh, I I know this because of this. Um, you're doing that wrong. That's not how we do it. Why are you saying these things out of the pride and pride of your heart? Um, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. It keeps no record of wrongs. Are you keeping record of wrongs? Go through this as a checklist. Are you trying to teach people by saying how much you know, or are you trying to teach them like this? Look. Being real, like, let me not give you an example because I don't want to get too far off, but I want to say, are you being real with someone or are you trying to teach them out of the pride of your heart? See, we as parents do this. Um, well, I know better than you because I'm the parent. Well, you that may be true. However, you don't need to tell them that that's true. They're not going to listen to you if you do that. See, it's how you say things, not necessarily what you say. But it is, it is a good idea to say things with the right attitude, too. Um, so... Uh, Proverbs 18, 7 through 8. Uh, the mouths of fools um, are their undoing, and their lips are a snare to their very lives. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost, being, inmost parts. 21, 23. Proverbs 21, 23 says, um, Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. Um, and then, okay. So, um, not uh, rebuking is not a harsh word spoken in, uh, in anger to blow up, in, in, in fury is what I wrote down, to blow off steam. Oh, will this person really irritate me, so I need to go tell them what for. Oh, I need to go uh, give this person a piece of my mind. That's not wise. I would encourage you to keep your mouth shut in those situations. Rebuking someone is not giving a harsh word, even in, or in anger or in the heat of the moment, to blow off steam. That's not... I see this happen in a lot of in a lot of Pentecostal churches, you know. I have a word from the Lord, and then they tell you what for. Okay. Um, or... Um, you know, man, the person who is just so excited about God's wrath and judgment. Oh, God's gonna wipe America off this off the map, and oh, he's gonna enjoy doing it too. Whoa, there, calm down. Um, restoring must always be my motivation. If I'm not, my purpose is not restoring. It's better for me to not even rebuke the person. Because what happens when you when you rebuke someone without trying to restore them, <clears throat> excuse me, without trying to restore them is you cause a problem between you and them. You cause a problem between them and other people. This is not a good thing. Galatians 6, 1 through 3, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in, sin, in a sin, even if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. If your neighbor sins, go to him, not everybody else, not not um, not their spouse, not their um, kids, not anybody else except for them. Nobody needs to know what you are talking about besides you and them. Um, 
the um, the only um, exception to this I would note is if you are opposite sexes. Let, let me say this in, in a way like this. Women, you should not go and reprimand a man in private. And if you do, it should be with extreme caution and extreme... Foresight. Men, once again, are roosters. They always have to, you know show their feathers and, and kick their legs around and everything and show how, how great and mighty they are. They definitely have a problem with pride. Definitely. And if a woman comes to them and, and, and tells them something that even something that's true, it'll be offensive to m most men. Not all men, necessarily. So if you do go and reprimand a man as a woman, do it very tactfully. Very tactfully. Because if not, you'll, you won't win over your brother. Okay? And men, be very careful about reprimanding a woman. First off, make sure that sexism isn't getting the best of you. Second off, if it's somebody else's wife, you should seriously consider as to whether or not you have the right to say something. Seriously consider that. Um, and also, don't forget that you know it is such a thing for a man to be seduced into, not necessarily by the woman, but by his own desires into partaking of sexual immorality. I don't know if I need to elaborate on this. Um, when a man and a woman are alone, sometimes they bad things can happen. And sometimes we think that nothing bad is going to happen because we're in conflict with the person. Stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. Just be careful, be very tactful, be wise. Um, I'm not going to say that women cannot reprimand men, and I'm not going to say that a man cannot reprimand a woman. Um, I, I will say that is a way of thinking about 1 Timothy. The passage in 1 Timothy 2, that, that is a way of seeing that passage. But um, with it not being mentioned anywhere else in Scripture, it's very difficult to know that um, but I will say that just make sure you're you're actually the person who should be recommending them um, and sometimes like I say you should just let it go that that, that is a thing that is that is a thing um, and I'm not really going to touch on this very much more um, because that's more of um, something that first off your church is going to have a lot more to say about that let's say for instance um, you're in a sense of God they're going to handle it differently than they would at um, I don't know why Methodist Church or you know whatever. Okay. Um, if you never since go to him, Matthew, eighteen fifteen says, um, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. If they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. And he goes on and says that, and says that. Um, Do it with love, though. If you're doing, you are re rebuking that person for their benefit and in a way that they will receive. Proverbs says that the wise person makes knowledge acceptable. Um, if you are friends and speak in a friendly manner, tone, friendly way, it is easier for them to listen. Okay. If you are friends and you're talking to them in a friendly way, it's going to be easier for them to receive that. Um, don't go to others to talk about it. Never go to someone else. Don't even let others know that you're going to get them to talk about it. If you don't hurt for them, you don't have the right heart. If you are not hurting for the person, you do not have the right heart. Okay, I in in my in in worship, I have only had to remove one person from the team in my entire time of doing it. And I've done done worship since I was 13. And I am 23 as of the recording of this date right now. Okay, that's 10 years, and I've only had to remove one person from the worship team, um, and it hurt when I did it. Not just because the person was very spiteful, but also because 
I really thought that she would change and that this person would I really thought that they would they would they would grow and change because they were headed in the right direction and then I don't know it just it just blew up um, what happened was she allied herself with other people who reaffirmed her and the situation got worse again even though she was making a turnaround and so because she had poor decision and then friends and because those those friends decided to um, oppose the structure of the church and the authority structure there it reaffirmed the attitude in her and uh, she ended up not changing I still have hopes that she will one day change but I can't guarantee that the problem is is that apart from God doing a move we never really change and I want to understand I want, I want to clarify that God changes us I've seen drug addicts be a completely different person okay God does change us but when we as Christians become high and mighty and prideful we don't allow God to change us anymore and then we become stagnant we don't do our mini our ministry we just kind of sit there like like a turd on the side of the road and God will not force us to change like that he will bring by situations to cause us to change but we can har continue to harden ourselves and soon be broken and, be and that beyond repair that's something that, that, that God will allow us to do we can destroy ourselves um, but if you don't hurt for them you don't have the right heart uh, pray first to ensure you have the right attitude. Always pray before you do these things, um, and ask for discernment. You know whether you should go to the person at this time or whether you should wait. Sometimes you'll start praying and God will say, "I don't want you to go with them." So you just hold off. Because sometimes, oh well, the Bible says don't highlight only those passages passages that help you to do what you want to do and you have set in your heart to do. I see, I see this all the time. Well, the Bible says this. It doesn't matter what the Bible says. You have it in your heart to do this. You're just using the Bible as a weapon. See what I mean? Um, and I'm not saying that it doesn't really matter. I'm saying it. whatever the Bible would have said, you still would have used it to, to manipulate your way. Um, don't use the Bible as a weapon. That was in the first lesson. Uh, don't approach someone if it has already been dealt with. If it is something that, that you were not even a part of necessarily has already been dealt with, just let it go. I worked for a call center one time, and um, this guy called, and he was all hot, hot and steamed, and uh, he told me the problem, and he's all ranting about the problem, right? He's still ranting, and I fixed the problem, ready to close the account. I'm like, okay, I, I fixed that. Um, I, I, I let him go on for a while, and I said, I said sir, 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 excuse me, um, I already fixed the problem. I, I said it in a good way, but, you know, I, I was trying to get m moving because, once again, at call centers, they really don't want you to fix the problem. They want you to have good call time. They want everybody to be happy, and they want no no long call time. So with that being said, you have to kind of rush people through. Um, and it really was not a good time in my life, I have to say that. Um, I, I My hat is off to those of you who can work at call centers and not get frustrated every day. Um, so, I, you know, I, I... Excuse me, sir. I... I I, I resolved the issue, and is there anything else I can help you with? And he said, uh, oh, you, oh, you did? And then he, he started up the started up again on, on, on shooting off his mouth, and I was just like, wow, this guy will not let it go. I had to stop him three different times to let him know that the problem was fixed, and there was nothing else I could do to fix the problem. It was fixed. Um, and it, you know, it was a two-second two thing. The person who, was, who he called in before was just being lazy. Um, but anyways... Um, getting off track, wind it back in. Um, don't approach someone if it's not in your authority. For instance, if someone's out living, if someone is outside the church, and they are not living according to scripture, come on, and they are not living according to scripture, it is not your responsibility to reprimand them. They are not living according to the Bible. They, they don't have the promises of the Word, and they don't need, they don't have to follow the ways of, of, of the Lord because they're not, they're not of Christ's body. I don't understand why Christians go out into the world and try and win these people over by yelling at them and telling everything, them everything that they're doing wrong. Well, that's never going to do anything. Um, and like I say, using the Bible as a weapon. Um, also, never reprimand another person's child. 
That is definitely not in your authority to do that. That is somebody else's responsibility. So if you have something to say to somebody else's kid, you go to the parent and you tell them what's up. Um, and when I say tell them what's up, I mean you tell them what, what the issue is. And you might find that you just have something that rubbed you the wrong way. I, it happened again last Sunday. Um, there, was, there was a young girl. Uh, that's not a good story to tell. It's a recent event. Um, ha, not gossiping. Um, yeah. And you know the thing is, it is very easy to get frustrated with with dealing with with people with conflict. It is very easy to get frustrated, as you can probably tell. I, Sometimes I allow talking about it to heat me up, and with that, I would like to offer something. If you're getting offend uh, getting upset with something, sometimes just stop talking about it, and you won't get upset about it. See what I mean? Um, it it greatly offends me that the people that pastors have to spend so much time <laughs> correcting and getting frustrated about are those people who are supposed to know better. They're the people who have been a part of the church for forever. It's those people. It's not the it's not the drug addicts, it's not the alcoholics, it's not the the you know, the people who've been following some other religion all their life. It's not those people. It's the Christians who are supposed to know better. We as Christians should not be those bitter old people and yet we allow ourselves to become those bitter old people. That's just a tragedy. <laughs> and, um, but anyways, um, let me tell you this story. Um, there was one person who, who, whose child was maybe, I will admit, it was doing something that, that was wrong. In this situation, the, the child was wrong. Okay? And the person went and reprimanded that person after the parent told them that they would handle it. See what I mean? They could have just gone to the parent and said it, but in this case, the parent already knew. And then they still went and ripped them into that child. That's not right. That's not good. We, can't, we cannot be calling ourselves the church and living like the world. We can't do it. You cannot change everyone else or the circumstances, only yourself. This is a good thing to keep in mind. You can never change someone else's heart. You can never change someone else's motivation. Okay. You can't change the circumstances that you find yourself in, but you can change yourself. You can't change how you react to it. Um, actively pursue peace. Unity depends on you, not someone else. Don't keep waiting for someone else to cause peace in the situation. You cause peace. Christians must bring restoration, healing, and direction in situations. Christians must bring, bring restoration, healing, direction in situations. Does that make sense? Um, abstain from stupid conversations. Just abstain from it. I mean, goodness sakes. I, I could say this in 50 different ways. You don't have to match somebody else's stupidity. If somebody else says something that starts getting into stupid conversations, just abstain from it. You, can, you don't have to say something. If someone must lose, let it be you. I know I lost there. Sorry about that. Um, if someone must lose, let it be you. If someone's gonna gonna lose the conversation, lose this argument, let it be you. Have the humility to just realize that it's not important. It's just not important. So if someone has to lose, let it be you. Don't always feel like you have to justify yourself. Don't always feel like you have to win. And remember, you're trying to win your brother, not the conversation.